These portraits are a mixture of clothes printing and image transfers with a jelly plate. I'll show you today how I made them. Hello you jelly fans! I recently purchased this print, among other, from Mark Yates. I hope you could see it well. And I wanted to try to print clothes too, but with a different intention and a different outcome. I never want to copy too much of others and find out my own style and techniques. But here I am again to say thank you Mark for your great tips and inspiration. And this print touched me a lot because of the shirt combined with the drawing of a face. This is a photo I wanted to use as an image transfer. It shows my deceased husband who died nine years ago. This is kind of difficult, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not shocking anyone here. Anybody who has lost a loved one knows how very personal the clothes of this person are or were. So I thought that this could be a good way to use his clothes and combine it with his face. My art, as probably for a lot of other artists here too, is part of the healing and mourning process. Some people don't want to talk about losses and that's perfectly all right. But I wanted to tell you, as I actually cannot talk about my art, especially the works I made in the last years, separately from the people I've lost. Stay tuned if you want to see how I got these results. This is the first part showing the printing process and part two coming next week. We'll be dealing with the development of the prints using watercolor and color pencils. So let's get to it. So the first thing is trying to get this laser printer copy of the photo trying both acrylics and edging ink. My old laser printer could not produce prints for this technique. I think the ink that brother uses is just not right for this. I didn't always want to go to the copy shop, so I bought a new laser printer by HP and this works well. For everyone who rather works with acrylics, I want to test the Golden Open color in black. I can really recommend using the Golden Open acrylics for it stays wet on the jelly plate. So you have a lot of time to think about what your next move is and you don't have to use another pickup color. That was the main reason why I switched to etching inks, but I might just switch back and work with the Golden Open. They are rather expensive, but are a very high quality product, so I think it's worth the money. You can already see here that the transfer works well with the Golden Open. You can take your time before you pull the print. The paint stays wet for a very long time. Those stripes over the eye are very interesting. Now for the etching ink. I'm using Charbonnel Black. You know, I always advise to roll out the paint on the plexiglass or glass first, but this is simply a test. So I roll on the plate for quite a while until it's an even and thin layer. So you can compare here. The edging ink is on the left. If you leave a little more on the surrounding areas, the edging ink will give you more interesting textures. But for a simple photo print, I'd say the Golden Open is almost better. It is also finer than other acrylic paints and therefore gives more details. Now I am printing the clothes. And this is my husband's knife, with which he was always carving little wooden figures. And then I'll be adding two different twine rolls for some more textures. I am starting with the Charbonnel Black here, but will also use the Golden Open again later. I'm using the remains of the test print and I'm inking up the plate with quite some rolling out. Pressing the shirt into the ink. I'm telling you, that was quite emotional when I ruined it for the first time. I am taking care that I press all rims and edges and buttons down, and the wrinkles also. 
Here you can see the almost photographic impression on the plate. Now the belt, and I'm not taking off the surrounding pa paint with paper, as I want this darker. Printing the knife is a bit of a challenge. It's hard to get all the parts of the relief. Actually, this is a case for Play-Doh, I'd say. And finally, some extra textures with the twines. As a printing paper, I am choosing Hahnemühle watercolor paper hot pressed. It is very fine for the print and I can later use watercolor on the print, which you will see me doing in part two of this video. Here is the printed result. And I made another one like this off camera. For the next print, I am using the etching ink again, this time only printing the shirt and the twine. A little too late, I am using another paper to take the color around the shirt off. It creates a horizon line and a very unusual twine design that really surprises me. That's not at all what I intended, but it is so interesting and symbolic. I'm not going to use this for the photo printing. I think it's, this is going somewhere completely different. Now I'm using the golden open, spreading it out thinly and evenly also. Here I do what I forgot to do with the last print, taking off the paint around the shirt while pressing it into the ink. Also here a very good image in the paint. And this is the result with the golden open color. I can see a faint ghost print, which I'm picking up with my all-time favorite acrylic color, Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Pressing the twine into the pickup color, and here I have to hurry because this regular acrylic color dries very fast. Not bad. I knew the ghost shirt impression would be very light, but we can work on that later. I also want to print with the Akua etching ink, as it behaves differently from the Chabonel and is easier to clean off because it's soy and not oil based. I'll apply it to the plate directly, but I'm mixing it a bit more on the plexiglass before to avoid any unwanted blobs. So sorry, the camera was not recording when I printed shirt and twine onto the plate, but here you see the impression. You can see the special texture the Akua creates, but I'm going to do one more to show you better. The crucial difference is the paper you pick up the excess paint with. I use deli paper now, which picks up the ink only partly and turns the remaining ink into interesting shape. See how interesting it looks on the deli paper? By the way, you cannot use this paper for collage or so, as the etching ink doesn't dry on this paper. A little twine, a little more deli paper. So here you see once more interesting structures that I will work out and develop in part two of this video. 
Now I want to print the head on the various prints I produced. So I'm trying out how the head looks on top of the prints. Turns out the copy is a little too small to fit. I print it out a little bigger and have to piece the copies together as my printer cannot print larger formats. On the Clinacridone gold color prints, I am enhancing the outlines of the shirt so that I can see them through the jelly plate and place the print of the head inside the collar. You'll see this in a minute. This is my tape dispenser for the connection of the copies. It looks like a perfect candidate for the Play-Doh, but that's another video. Of course I can see that the lower copy is a bit darker than the other, but A I am too lazy to print it again and B might even look interesting. I put one of the faces underneath the plate to know roughly where I should bray on the paint, but that's only confusing because it's the wrong way around anyway. I have decided to print all of the heads with a golden open black. And no, this is not the print, it's the photo underneath you're seeing. This is the disappointingly light print. Trying to register the head in a place that makes sense somehow. I'll show you in a minute how to hold the jelly plate to register the best. Well, thought so. Not much to see here. I will still be able to use this one in the second part of the video. Inking up with the golden open one more time. This looks very promising. I'm taking off excess paint with a baby wipe. This works better with the acrylics. The etching ink you'd have to pick up with oil, which is messy. Here is a still in which you can see the best way to hold the plate, to see where to put the neck first. Let this sit for 5 or 10 minutes. And this is the orange husband. He has some twine for a brain. Same procedure as before for this one. This is the result. Because this base is made with Akua, I have a little bit more freedom to work on it, especially with the eraser, as you'll see in part two. The last one. The face print doesn't show really good, so I decide to take the ghost print on top of it too. For that, I'm using a matte medium, so there is no other color disturbing. Now this is real tricky to register the ghost on the original print.
Well, that's a little better. Here you can see how I developed all of these further. Watch part 2 of this video to see how I made them. Coming next week. Thanks for watching and see you soon.